here even this morning. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody that can heal like you. There's no one that can deliver like you. There's no one that can give us freedom like you, Lord. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise because you are so great, God. And God, we ask God that you will bless each and every hearer, Lord, of your word. That you will open up our minds and our ears that we may receive and not only hear, but walk out your word, God. We thank you right now. God, I pray that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will set free in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, God, that your word would not hit the ground nor the ceiling, but enter into the inner soul of men. And I pray, God, that you allow me to decrease so that you may increase. We give you glory and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I tell you, if I can just sing a little bit, I, I don't know how to sing that much, but I'm just saying every time you just sing that song, it's something. Amen. <laughs> uh, we thank God for each and every one of you here in a year to give God praise on this Super Sunday, this uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Amen. How many of you thank God that good when it's all said and done, God is the best winner. He can be the best winner. He wins all fights, all battles, all games. And I thank God. How many of you thank God that you're on his side? Amen. That you're on the winning team. Say, I'm on the winning team. Doesn't matter who loses today, but I know that we serve a God that never loses. I'm on the winning team, and we thank God for being here on this day. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today faith that moves mountains. Say faith that moves mountains. And I want to ask you, do you have any problems or do you have any situations that are in your life that you need to be removed in your life? You got anything? Any of you have some stuff that you're encountering that you need God to remove? And, and, and not only thing, and I love this, uh, this, I don't know if you remember the Marvin Gaye. I know we have some ones that listen to Marvin Gaye, right? Man. And it said, ain't no mountain, what? High enough. enough. And then it said, ain't no valley, what? Low no enough. enough. And then it said, ain't no river, what? Wide, Wide enough. enough. To what? To you keep me from, from what? Up. Getting to you, what? Yeah. Baby. How do you remember that? How do you remember that song? And, and when you look at this song, mountains have long represented problems to be solved. Amen. When you look at mountains in your life, that means that there are some things that I need God to solve, that there's some things that are in my life that is just, just overtaking me. Amen. How are you going through that? And, and maybe there's some obstacles or there's some things that you need to overcome. There may be some burdens that you are carrying. There may be some troubles that you need to overcome. There may be some problems that you're dealing with. But when it's all said and done, mountains are considered as what? Problems. Amen. Just give me a little bit of base, please. Amen. Just to say, mountains are considered, say, problems. Wow. Nobody likes to deal with problems. How do you like to deal with problems? If you like to deal with problems, we need to talk. <laughs> because I don't think anybody in here loves to deal with problems. Nobody's excited about problems. Nobody said, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow because I know that I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> if we had anybody that was like that, we'd look at them like they were crazy. But there's some things that may, if everybody have different problems when it's all said and done, all of us have dealing with some problems in our life that, that it comes in different shapes, it comes in different sizes. Maybe your mountain is what? Financial strain. That may be your mountain. How do you know that that may be sometimes? Maybe it may not be a financial strain that may be in your life. Maybe your mountain is sickness. How do you know that people have been getting sick? People have been leaving here, and that may be their family mountain. Like, Lord God, why is it like everybody's getting sick, everybody's dying? What is going on? But that may be their mountain. Maybe your mountain is what? Confusion. Ooh, Lord, hey, man. How many of you have two mountains with that? Well, you have a mountain of, say, confusion. When you just like, Lord, that is my mountain in my life. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm coming. I don't know if I'm going. But God, when it's all said and done, God, I have what? A mountain of confusion. And maybe some people mountains is their marriage. Marriage is rocky. Marriage is up and down. That may be their mountain. And then, last but not least, it may be some crisis, family crisis. How I many you know that it seems like every time you look around, somebody got something going on in your family? Hey, man, you like, geez, do everybody in America go through more than my family? I just need to know, Lord. And that may be your mountain. So what is it that you're saying here? I want you to look in your life, and I want you to get to a place where you say, stop magnifying your mountain and start activating your faith. Say, stop magnifying 
your, mat, your, your, your mountain and start activating, say what? Your faith. Do you know that you got some faith that can move some things in your life? Ooh, say God help me now. God help me now. So let's go to the word of God. Let's go to the word of God and we're going to see what it's talking about faith. We're going to look at how activating our faith that God can move some difficult mountains that you may be encountering in your life. Then let's go to Matthew 17 and 20. Uh, this particular verse is about faith. And what I love about this, Jesus, he took Peter and also James and John up to the mountain. And as you read this, you see that they were up in the mountain. As they were in the mountain, they were experiencing the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. And what are you saying by that? When you look at the transfiguration, basically it makes it, it says that they experienced something that was changing with inside of them. So when they were up in the mountain with Jesus, they experienced something that was changing what, what? inside of them. So we see as you begin to read, we see that their, their faith was being strengthened. But then you have the other nine disciples that were at the bottom of the mountain that were struggling in their faith. So you have three that are in the mountain and they're getting their faith straight. But then you have the nine at the bottom of the mountain, the disciples. They were what? Going through with their faith. How do you been through some things in your faith in your life where you've been going through in your faith? And you've been going through some attacks and where the enemy been trying to attack your faith, telling you that you ain't going to make it. Oh, no. You, well, why believe? Why trust? He ain't going to come out of that. That ain't going to happen for you. That's just for everybody else but you. But they were going through some attacks and they were wondering, well, God, why is it that we couldn't heal this, this, this young boy that was going through? So we see that this, they, were, they, were, they were faced with a situation where they were faced with a young boy that came to them. A uh, young boy was brought to them and he was being uncontrolled. We didn't know where he was. He was falling out falling down and everywhere. And they were like, oh, we, disciples, we need you. I'm paraphrasing. We need you to help them. And then the, the disciples, the nine, couldn't help him. And they were wondering, why is it that we couldn't help him? Why is it that we couldn't heal him? Why is it that we couldn't put our, our, our hands on him? And then God said, because of your unbelief. Woo! Have you been through that? When you say, why is it this storm taking place? Why does it seem like I can't get to get past this? Why does it seem like I can't get over this? Why does it seem like I can't get over this mountain? Say, because of your what? Unbelief. And say, God help me with my unbelief. How do you know that we all have some unbelief in us? And I don't care how many people come around saying, oh, I got all the faith. No, you don't. There's some areas in your life where you just have some what? Unbelief. All of us struggle with our faith. So when we go to the word of God, let's look at this. And I love this. It says this in Matthew 17 and 20. It says, you don't have what? Enough faith. Why can't I move this? I ain't got what? Enough faith. And then it, it goes on and says, Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had what? Faith. Even as what? Whew. How many of you know? Don't ne never compare your faith with somebody else's faith. Say, God, help me now. Because when the Bible said a mustard seed of faith, let me tell you, it's hard to see a mustard seed of faith with your own naked eye. So, so don't compare, and don't compare your faith with somebody else. Then the Bible goes on and says this. It said, you could say to what? This mountain. Woo, Jesus, thank you, Lord. How many of you just have a little bit of faith? And he said, some of us think that we got to have a huge amount of faith. Oh, you better have some big faith before this happens. Oh, you better have some huge faith before you get some money. You better have some huge faith before you get that promotion. Oh, you better have some big old faith. What? And then you feel intimidated because people tell you what kind of faith you should have. Ooh, say thank you, Lord. But, and then you look at their life like, why are you always giving them what they prayed for? And why is it that they get what they got, God? Why, Lord? He said, well, don't worry about their, their faith. Look at your faith. And, but I ain't got no faith. He said, that's what I'm talking about. He said, even that little faith that you think that you don't have. He said, that's what I want to activate. Uh -huh. Ooh, say, God, help me. Amen. And then the Bible goes on and says this. He said, if you had faith even as small as what? A mustard seed. And then he said what? You could say to what? This mountain. What kind of mountain do you have in your life? He said, oh, I ain't got, I don't know if it can work in this marriage. What kind of faith do you got? I don't know if I can, I'm always lonely. I don't know if this is going to work in my life. He said, what kind of faith? He, he said, everything that is going on, every mountain that is in your life, everything that you, that you that is transpiring in your life, he said, you have enough faith what to say to that problem in that mountain what? Move. Ooh, Jesus. Have you been a little bit intimidated with some situations in your life and you didn't want to say nothing about it? 
<laughs> you're like, oh, it's just getting the best of me. This is so huge. This is so much. I can't have it. You got to learn how to say, God, I need you to help me with my faith. And no, we ain't going to have it. What? At this house. Who we'll say, God, help me? And then the Bible goes on and says, said, from move what? From here what? To there. He said, you got enough faith that you can tell the mountains that you that is taking place in your life to what? Move. You ever had somebody in your face or whatever? You tell them, you say, back up. You, 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 ever, you ain't gonna have nobody in your face just be in your face like, oh, okay. Oh, get away. No! You, 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 and that's how we are with our faith. And our faith, when it comes to the problems that, that take place and the enemy is trying to allow us to be confused and trying to get the best of us, when that thing gets in our face, we can't get scared. Say, God, thank you. See, some of us look at our mouth and be like, Oh, that is huge. I don't know what's going to happen. No, God said you got enough power and that I have given you and you have enough authority when you can look at your mouth and, and say, back up. Who oh, say, Jesus, thank you. Who say, Lord, I say, Lord, I need to tell some things this week to back up. So when you're going through some things in your life, when you have a, when you, see, this is what it is. How do I get faith? Because the Bible says, and let's go to the next scripture. It says this. It says this. The Bible says this. So faith comes from what? Hearing. Hearing. So faith comes from what? Hearing. Hearing. And then the Bible goes on and says what? It said, and hearing through what? The word of God. You don't get faith because you hear it through other folks. Oh, come on. Jesus. Oh, it didn't work for you? Oh, well, I guess it ain't going to work for me. He said, that is what your problem is. Your faith cannot, what, escalate because you're hearing through other people and not my word. Yeah, Ooh, say, right. God, help me not. He said, you're hearing through everybody else, but what? My word. So what are you saying, Shane? He said, when you're faced with a mountain of loneliness, instead of going to everybody else, instead of going to the books, instead of trying to go to everybody and see what you can try to figure out, he said, no, you read the scripture. Let's go to the next scripture. He said this. The next scripture says this. He said, look at this. Don't be a what? So my faith builds up when I look at what? The, and I hear what? The word of God. So when I feel like uh, my mountain is loneliness in my life, he said, no, you need to tell that loneliness to say what? Back up. Uh -huh. And how do I tell that loneliness to back up? It's when you look at what? My word. Yes. And then you look at my word. It says what? Don't be afraid. Amen. For I am what? Woo! How do you thank God that he's with you? Amen. If you feel lonely, if you feel like you ain't got nobody, he said, what? I'm with you. And then the Bible goes on saying, don't what? How do you know that some people feel like they're discouraged when they're by themselves? Mm -hmm. But God has said, when you look at my word, he said, the only way that you can activate your faith is when you look at my word and see what it says and see what I'm capable of what? Doing in your life. Who yeah. say, thank you, God. Thank it says God. this, don't be discouraged, for I am what? Your God. And then it says, I will what? Strengthen you. And then not only strengthen you, but I will do what? Help you. I will also what? Hold you up with my what? He ain't weak. He said my victorious what? Hand. He said, so when you experience an amount of the bonus, he said, just go to my word. And not only just go to my word, he said, but also say my word. And then when you say my word and put it on your mountain, then your mountain don't have any choice but what? To back up. Say, God, help me now. See, some of us, are, we, we're causing our own pain. And because we ain't what? Activating our faith. And how do you activate your faith? You speak the word of what? God. Oh, Jesus. So when you experience it, let's go to the next scripture. If you, how many of you got some people that is, is sick and you tired of experiencing sickness? Amen. And maybe your mountain is sickness. And like I may mention, what God is saying that you can tell that mountain to move. Because why? Because I can activate my faith when I look at the word of God. And the word of God said, I will give you back what? Your health. So when I feel like I'm sick and there's always something going on, I can go to the word of God and I can activate my faith. Even when I'm down and out, I can look at my mouth, mountain and I say, oh, you ain't got the best of me. No, because God is going to give me back my what? Health. Yes, and then not only that, but he's going to heal what? My wounds. Yes. How do you need God to heal your wounds? Yes, yes. Say, God, heal my wounds. Yes. 
Say, Lord, I need you to heal my wounds. Then the next scripture, let's go to the next scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to go through these scriptures here. If you're experiencing certain things in your life, we see that the word of God, even if you're experiencing a, a marriage, uh, how do you have some people that you know that is going through in their marriage? That may be their mountain. They're like, Lord, I don't know what to do. My marriage is on rock. I don't know what's going on. It's like everything's just falling from the mountain. Rocks just falling everywhere. Have you ever been there? And, and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. But you can say, well, just look on God. Look at God's word and allow it to activate your faith. He said, let it activate your faith. Even when you feel like giving up and you have a wall where it's like, Lord, my marriage is my mountain and I don't know what to do. I gave my all. I don't know what else to do. He said, the Bible says what? Love never what? So, so when you're faced with that mountain, you can go to the word of God and say, let me see what his word said. He said, love never what? Gives up. Never what? Loses faith. And then he goes and says, it is what? Always what? I know that may be my mountain, but I'm hopeful for what God is about to do. I'm hopeful for what God is about to do. And then he said, and endures through what? Some. You be looking at people like, it's, what? That's good. But God has said, I can help you through what? Every circumstance. And that may be your mountain. And God is saying, when it's all said and done, you can tell that mountain to back up. That's right. Back up off my marriage. And, and allow God to heal it. Lord, I'm allowing you, God, to give me. We're taking the love, God, and the passion, Lord God. Whatever it is, God, I want to tell them what? To back up. God said, you have enough faith when you can tell your mountain, when, when, when you can tell that mountain, say, back it up. Thank you, God. And how do you know that when it's all said and done, you want to get in a situation where you're weak? When you feel like you allow the enemy to rob you of what? The little faith you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know that he want to take every, he, he said, I want to get all of the little faith that you have. I want you to be doubtful because if you're doubtful, then you won't have a vision for what your future looks like. But God is saying, no. He said, when it's all said and done, I have given you power. And whatever mountain is in your life, I've given you the authority, even the little, little faith that you have. He said, it needs to be activated. Amen. He said, just use that little faith. Don't compare it to everybody else. He said, just use what I got, gave you. Yes. Yes. And how many of you said, well, people believe in houses. People believe in healing and all that stuff. How they do all that? He said, I can do it for you. Amen. Amen. Even, and, and don't think that, oh, your little seed ain't worth nothing. He said, even that little baby must have said, he said, I can work that thing out. That's right. But how do I work it out? I can only work it out when you rely on me. Yeah. He, he said, stop being self-sufficient and trying to do it yourself. He said, just look to me and allow me to work with what you want. Hey. Oh, say, God, work with me. Work with me, God. And then, especially if you're going through confusion. How many of you go through confusion? Man. And you're confused about some things, and that is your mountain. That's always, yes, it's always in the forefront of your mind. And you're like, oh my God, I'm so confused. With, with, I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know where you want me to go. Lord, I'm confused. I don't know if I'm coming. I don't know if I'm going. Lord, I'm what? Confused. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says this even when you feel it confused, you can reactivate what? Your faith. Yes. And then the Bible says this it says, the next scripture. <laughs> And this is what I love about God's word. And it said, and this same God who what? Take care of what? No, let's go to the next scripture. I'm sorry. It said what? Be alert and what? I'm confused. He said, just be alert. And what? Sober. Stop trying to be busy. Amen. Stop trying to do your thing. You, you, you so confused because you're doing everything. Uh -huh. He said, but what I need you to be is what? Sober. What do you mean? So, yeah, he's saying you, you naturally drunk, but you everywhere. Yes. And we know that folks that are drunk and out, you know, they everywhere. Yes. He said, there, there's no way that you can be drunk and be alert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is how the enemy gets you. Wow. Well, he gets you when you're not alert. Yes. Wow. So when you're experiencing confusion, he gets stuff and throw it at you. <laughs> yeah, you should go to church with me. <laughs> he didn't do nothing for you right now. <laughs> So what he does, he keep on giving you things after things and mountains after mountains. And you're like, Lord, I'm just, this is it. He said, be alert and what? Sober-minded. Amen. So, stop having your mind on everything else and have your mind, what, on me. Yeah. And, and then you'll see that you'll be sober-minded. And not only sober-minded, but you'll stay what? Alert. Yeah. Say, God, keep me alert. Keep me alert. Because, let me tell you, it said, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like what? Alert. If you're not alert... 
the enemy will get the best of you. Uh -huh. Well, how can I be alert, huh? He said, when you keep on speaking my word, when you keep on looking at my word, he said, you don't have any choice but to be what? Alert. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know, God. It's kind of hard for me to get a scripture in. He said, okay. Well, keep on not getting the scripture in and looking at my word and see what, it, what I'm capable of doing. Then you will fall and then the enemy will what? Get the best of you. Do you know that he's running around and looking so he can see who he can get? Amen. Who? Amen. Say, God said, please don't let him get me. Amen. He's looking around to see where your weakness is at. That's right. Preach. Oh, let me just, let me, oh, then let me give it. Okay, they got that mountain. Oh, let me add a little bit more pressure to it. That's right. Because Preach. if I add a little bit more pressure, they may just say, forget it. That's right. Preach. That's right. Who, who That's right. That's right. So he ain't just going around twiddling his thumb, but he's around, running around, and prowling around trying to figure out who he can get. That's right. How do you know that some people are so big of a talk? Yeah, I'm a believer. I, yeah, Jesus. But when some come, they like, I don't know about this. Right. I don't know if I can give it to you this way. <laughs> he said, no, you have to be what? Sober and what? On alert. Amen. And then the Bible says this. He's looking for someone to what? To foul. He want to eat you up with the doubt. Amen. Do you know that he want to eat you up with the doubt that is in your life? Oh, I don't believe that he can move this. Mm. Uh, so what you do, you magnify your mountains more than you magnify God. Right. So we put so we magnify and look at our our problems and like, oh, that's huge, and we don't even look at God like that. Mm -hmm. We don't even say, oh, I serve a big God that's bigger than my mountain. God says, stop looking at the mountain and concentrate what on me because I want the, the mountain remover. Amen. Uh, oh, say thank you, God. Say thank you, God, for allowing me to serve a mountain remover. See, everybody can't remove your stuff, right? But how many you thank God that He can remove it? That's he right. said that I can remove, and not only that, but I, the, the, because you're in me, I'm in you, and because of the little faith that you have, he said that you can speak to that very thing, and they don't have any choice but to what? Get out your way. Uh -huh. So what it is? Well, so whatever your mountain is, even this week, you better say, it. get out of my way. That's mm -hmm. right. You ain't going to tell nobody this. You ain't going to be through the mall, and, and folks bumping into you, and you're just taking it. Ooh, everybody just running into me. You're going to be like, you're going to be pushing. <laughs> you're going to be pushing back. You don't mind my way. Get on out of my way. If it's crowded, I'm, you, you can just push me so long. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to just start what? Clearing the way. Uh, <laughs> if the key is far, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> because it, you're surrounded around so much what? Stuff. Yeah. And then you're not going to allow those distractions to keep the, getting the best of you. Amen. Where it's knocking you down and over and you can't even see what's ahead. But God is saying you got enough faith to say back up. Yeah. I got to go back up. Yeah. If it's lonely, it's back up. If it's down, back up. He said tell that mountain, say back it up. Yeah. Woo, say God, help me. So when it's all said and done, you have enough faith. Let's go to the next scripture. We're going to read, read this. It's an illustration of a man that had a lot of power. And when it came to God, Jesus healing, healing this person for him, he believed and he had faith. Mm -hmm. He didn't have no doubt. So we see that the Bible says this. When Jesus returns to Capernaum, we see that this here says, the Roman officer came and pleaded with him. And six says, my young Lord, my young servant lies in what? In bed. Paralyzed in terrible pain. And then Jesus said, I will come and heal him. I mean, I've been like, okay, come on, come on, yeah, you coming? Okay, God, you got. I need you, Jesus, right now. I don't need, no, I, I want you to come. Right. But this man, he had a different mindset. He had enough faith. He said this, but the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come in what? To my house. Now, how many of you feel like that sometimes? Lord, I don't have you worthy to come in this, 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 this house. <laughs> I mean, you know, you ain't going to invite everybody in your house, you know. You ain't worried, God. It's, very, it's dirty and stuff happening, God. Stuff everywhere, God. I know, not right now. Don't do it right now. Just don't come now. But the Bible says this. Just say what? The word. <laughs> say, say, say the word. Say the word. Ooh, how do you thank God that when he spoke light, he spoke earth into existence, the stars, and he said, let there be light. He what? Spoke it. Do you know that the same power that he had when he said that is what? In you as well? Yes, yes. Thank you, he said what? Speak that thing. Uh -huh. And then the Bible says this. It says, and just say the word from where what? You, you are. are. Me, I would have been like, I want you to come. Uh -huh. 
I don't know if it'll get there on time. You sure it'll get there by the time I get there, Lord? Right. That, that, that been what? Doubt. Uh-huh. And that's how, how do you know that's some of us? No, I don't want you to speak. I want you to actually physically come. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the Bible says this. And they say, and I know this because I am what? He know this. He said, I run stuff. Amen. And because I say it, I know they do it. And because I serve a God that is able to do anything but fail, he said, I know that you got the same power. And because they come when I tell them to come, I know that your word is whole not powerful with my words. And it says this. He said, I know this because I am under the authority of my what? Superior office. And I have the authority over my soldiers. Glory. Say, I have the authority. Amen. You have the authority over what? Your mountains. Amen. You got the authority. Nobody else got the authority. Say, I got the authority. Amen. And the Bible says this. It says, and I have the authority over my soldiers. I only need to say what? Go. 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 Preach. Not true. Go. <laughs> this, see, this man, he's got to have some. He's like, I'm a superior. You know, I, I run stuff. And when I tell them to go, they go. When I tell them to come, they come. He, and then the Bible goes on and says this. And they come. And if they say to my slave, do this, they what? Woo! And then the Bible said in 10, when Jesus heard this, he was what? Amen. He was amazed. Can you, can you imagine just blowing Jesus' mind? Like, oh my God, I'm amazed. I'm so amazed. Oh, okay, that's another song. And then it says this. It said, turn it to those who were what? Following him. He said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith what? Like this in all what? Israel. Amen. That's the next scripture. And then it said, then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go what? Back home. Mm-hmm. He said, go back because you what? Believe. Amen. And then it says, in what? <laughs> when, when you speak and say things for it to do or go or to come, he said, you don't have any choice but to happen. So say, God, thank you, Lord. Say, allow what I say, God, to happen. If I want the mountain to back up, it will happen. If I'm going through some sickness and I, I say back up, it will what? Happen. We'll say, God, thank you right now. And then it said, and the young servant was healed that what? Same mind. God is saying that there's some things that you have not spoken into, and I don't know how long it's going to take. It may not take an hour. It may be a month. It may be three months. It may be uh, six months. It may be a year. But as long as you keep on speaking to it, you don't have a choice but to what? Say, move. Jesus. Oh, say, God, thank you. You don't have a choice but to what? Move. Do you think Myra Gay just said that just to be singing that? He said, baby, ain't nothing going to keep me from you. No mountain, no problems, no troubles, no circumstances. I'm still coming. Amen. And God is saying the same thing to you. Amen. He said, don't you dare allow mountains to get the best of you. Yes. He said, just speak it and tell that mountain what you need it to do. Mm-hmm. Mountain, I need you to go to the left. Yeah. Mountain, I need you to go to the right. Sickness, no, you ain't having it today. No, doubt, we ain't having it today. No, loneliness, we ain't having it today. No, doubt, we ain't having it today. No, you yeah. speak to that mountain and say, back up. Yeah. Say, God, thank you right yeah. now. Thank you, Lord. So whatever you go to, say, say this week, tell some stuff to back up. Tell some stuff. Remember, you only need a mustard seed of faith for God to move your mountain. Yes. Now, if he would have said, a huge amount of faith, some of us would have missed the mark. Yes. But how do you thank God that he said just a mustard seed? That means don't say that you ain't got faith. You got some. It's a what? Even if it's a mustard seed. He said, I can still work with it. Yes, thank you, God. Now, if you would have said have an apple or orange or some a pear, I would have been like, oh, mm, that's going to be hard for brother right me, for me to do that. <laughs> We all would have been hit. We'd been like, I don't know about that kind of faith. We, that's some big old faith. But no, he said, just let me use the little mustard seed of faith that you have. And how is that? Just go back and think about what I've done for you in the past. Yeah. Yeah. He said, just go back in my word and see how I made a way for those that were in the Bible. He said, hey, I'm the same God that does not change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and what forevermore. He said, I don't change. Oh, thank you, Lord. He said, just because of that, you have the authority to speak to your mountain if you just have a little bit of faith and say, back up. Yes. Back up out of my way. So there's a, there's a saying, and I don't, I don't know, there's a scripture here in Matthew 19, 26. And if you're weak and you're powerless and you feel like uh, things are getting the best of your faith, you can always go to the word of God. Say, I can always go to the word of God. So ask yourself, am I trusting in God or my own abilities to produce a change in my life? 
am I trusting in you, God, or am I what? Own abilities to have a change to come about what? In my life. And God has said, you can't do it. Just have a little bit of faith and let me work it out. Amen. And how many you need God to work it out? Yes. The next scripture says this here. It said, Jesus looked at them and said, what man? Oh, Jesus. I'm going to tell this about that. You going to back on up? I got the authority. I got the degrees. I got the money. I can do this. I can pave the way. How I many you know that sometimes we can get we can look at ourselves too much? Amen. But the Bible says this. With man, this is what? Impossible. I can't do that. I can't speak into that. I, I, no, I can't move that mountain. That's too big. He said, if you do it, it's impossible. That's right. Yes. But with God, what? Oh, oh it's God. impossible. And that is our problem. We try to do it. Yeah. And allow, not allow God to help us, what? Do it. Yeah. But he said, you're not just speaking in, in your own power, but it's the power that I've equipped you with. Amen. And just use that little faith. He said, yes, don't magnify it. Don't look at it thinking it's bigger than me. He said, that's the problem. He said, you can't do it on your own, but look to me because I am the God that can make power, what's, what's impossible, what? Possible. Free. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. There's a saying here, and I want you to imagine what can happen to your mountain and your life if you just say, God, Give me enough faith to speak to it. Amen. Just look at the mountains. Everybody got different mountains. Whatever your, whatever your mountain is of trouble, look at that mountain and just say, Lord God, give me strength. Yes. Just imagine what your life will look if you just, don't get scared. Mm -hmm. Start speaking and putting God's word on it. Yes. Yeah, you know, like Beyonce put a ring on it. Put his word on it. Amen. We'll say God, thank you. Thank you know, you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you know, whatever the song is, I forgot. <laughs> You know, you know. So when you feel like you're going through it, some mountains in your life, say, say, put his word on it. Amen. Put his word on it. Say, put his word on it. Amen. And when you put his word on it, he said, it don't have a choice but to what? Happen. Yes. Hallelujah. Because of what? The faith that you're utilizing and you're saying, God, I can't do it but by you. Yes. I can do all things. Yes. Yes. Through Christ, who what? Yes. Strengthen me. Amen. There's a saying here in Neil, a quote in Velez. He says this. He said, you don't need great faith to move mountains. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You only need what? To use the poor faith you say you have. Yeah. Woo! Say, God, help me now. He said, you don't need the great faith. Just use that little poor faith. I can't do this. Oh, that's too big. Now he said, use that. He said, that's the faith that I want you to use. Yes. Don't think that a uh, great faith is going to move it. It is what? The poor, the little, the smallest, yes. the smallest faith. He said, that is what you need to use. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because then if you have all of it, then it's all on what? You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you allow me to use just a little bit of that faith mm -hmm. that you have. He said, I'll equip you to, and I'll use you and, and allow you to talk and speak into things where you don't have any choice but to move out your way. Yes. And say, God, help me to pave the way Amen. with your word. Put his word on it. Let that pain. Wait, don't get scared of what's going on. Just look up a scripture, sickness, and then start speaking that thing. Yes. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? If whatever you're going through, look up a scripture. You, we all Google stuff. Look up Google it and start speaking on it. Yes. Amen. Say, no, I ain't going to let you have the best of me. I'm going to speak on that. I'm going to use this word, and we're going to speak on this mountain, and they don't have any choice but to move. Amen. Uh -huh. And then, let me tell you, it's good when you have expectations for it to move. Mm -hmm. Don't say, oh, it's going to be there for about six months a year. <laughs> if that's your expectation, then it ain't got no choice but to be there. Yeah. What is faith if you can see it? Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. He said, no, I just need you to walk in faith. Amen. And how do I get this faith? He said, continue you looking at my word. Amen. And every time you look at my word, it starts building your faith. Yes. You can't get faith if you don't look at God's word and know what he's capable of doing. Yes. How can you trust in a person if you don't know nothing about him? Mm -hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? How do you know your mate if you don't ask questions? Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? How do I know? Then God has said, how would you know what I'm capable of doing if you don't even look at my word and know what I'm capable of doing? Yes. He said, just look at me. Amen. 
And then when you look at it, it builds your faith. When people say, oh, you think that's going to happen? No, the word of God says this. Yes. He can do all things. I can do all things through what? Christ who what? Uh -huh. You know how folks be down. You sure you can do that? I can't do it. That's true. That's right. Yes. But he can give me the strength, what? Right. To do it. That's right. You sure you can go on and get that and go and try to get that loan? Oh, with me. I can do it. Oh, okay. But with God, all oh, things are possible. Yeah. You sure you want to walk on that, that business plan that you have? It ain't gonna work. Many people have done that. Mm -hmm. I can do it. But with God, all things are what possible. Because of what? I start speaking God and putting his word on my mountain. And God is saying, don't be like those nine disciples that couldn't even heal a sick boy when they brought him. Why, why is it that you see God, every Jesus, every single day? You're walking with this man. And I, if I was walking with him, I'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, we got it. You healed. Boom, boom. You, you see what I'm saying? You've been feeling some kind of confidence, right? The same disciples, they lack confidence. When Jesus went to the mountain and left them at the bottom, they got scared. Yeah. And God is saying, you can't be like that. Just utilize what I've given you. Amen. Just think about what I've taught you. Yeah. You didn't say, oh, Lord, you ain't here, so I can't do it. No, I've equipped you. Yes. He said, i equipped you, and I've given you that power. Mm -hmm. Now what? Utilize it. Yeah. So this week, instead of getting scared at your mountain, and being afraid. I want you to have the faith as a mustard seed and I want you to start speaking to it and putting God's word on it. See, when you speak to it and try to use your own ability, oh, you gonna know. It ain't going nowhere. It ain't, go, it ain't going nowhere. That's in your authority. But when you use the authority of who? God. You don't have any choice but to what? No. Amen. So this week, whatever it is, whatever mountain you in, and yes, that Lord. you're going through and that you need God to move out your Amen. life, mm. not go and then return. Amen. I ain't talking about those. Right. I'm talking about I need it to be removed. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that's in your life that you need God to remove, whatever mountain, he said, put my word on it. Yes. And then watch it back up. Amen. But you can't, when you put my word on it, you can't just put my word on and say, oh, we're going to see. No, he said, I need you to show action. Yes. And how is that? You need to start walking. You need to start walking. And some of us, we let's see, we don't walk. We say, we speak it, and then we leave it, and we say, oh, we're going to see. No, but God is saying, when you speak it, and when you put the, my word on, then I need you to have some action and walk it out. Mm -hmm. And like it's already done. <laughs> say, as if it's already done. And that is what He said, when you, that is faith. When you walk as if it's already what? Done. Oh, Jesus. So this, this time, I ain't playing no games. Whatever that mountain is in my life, I'm putting God's word on it. Yes. I'm tired of putting my word because evidently I said stuff and it ain't working. Yes, How many you know that you put some stuff, you said, you did things, you try to do it, and it still ain't working. Yes. You still dealing with the same yes. stuff. But he said, that's the problem. You still doing with it. Yes. He said, let me deal with it. Just put my word on it and watch what? It moves. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what God wants us. He said, it's not this huge faith that moved your mountain. He said, it's just a what? Must have seen your faith. Right. And I want you to imagine that mustard seed. I'm telling you, it's, you can barely see a mustard seed with your naked eye. Mm -hmm. It's so tiny. You'd be like, is it, this it? <laughs> this all the faith I got to have, God? All right. And if you look at it, you'll be looking at your life like, oh, my God, that's all he wants? Amen. Is this little bitty seed of faith? Mm -hmm. He said, that's what I want. Because he said, when I grow it, I get the glory. Amen. Not yes. you. Amen. Yeah. He said, you won't be where you at. It's not going to stay a mustard seed. He said, that's all I need to work with. But he said, when it grows, then you can give what? Me the glory. Yes. And not give yourself what? The glory. I did that. I done that. I said that. No, he said, you would give what? Me the glory. And because you give me the glory, you don't have any choice but to expand what? In your faith. Yes. And then you find out, and you be looking back in the past, you be like, I can't believe I was going through that. And I, I, that, I, ooh, I just overcame that. Then there's baby steps. Amen. You got to move from a baby to what? An adult. adult. Preach, yeah. preach. And God is saying that's how it is in your spiritual life. You can't just stay on that same baby faith. Mm -hmm. That mustard seed. He said, I can work with it. Yes. But you got to allow me to work with Growing, it so you yes. can continue to what? Grow. Amen. Because there's going to be things, different mountains that are going to try to come and attack you on this journey. 
and you can't use that same that, that same faith that you had in the past. Right. He said, now nah, I need to give you some bigger faith. Amen. But if you allow me to work with that little small faith, sure. and now you had a what? An apple. That's right. Right. <laughs> and then you move from an apple, then you had a watermelon. Yeah. And then you be like, oh God, I'm just walking. Everything that my feet tread upon is what? It is mine. Hallelujah. We'll say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. That's what we want to be. God is going to Tell the, the God is going to yes. remove those mountains. Faith can move mountains. That's right. Say the right faith. The right faith can move your mountains. Mountain. Come on, give God praise. Amen. 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 We're gonna take communion in the name. We thank God for this first Sunday of February.